Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam, and this video is about abdominal aorta ultrasound. In these ultrasound images, we see the normal aorta in longitudinal and transverse planes. In the longitudinal image, this anechoic tubular structure is the aorta. We can also see two branches arising from it. The first branch is the celiac axis. And the second branch is the superior mesenteric artery. This is the liver, the left lobe of the liver, and between the liver and the celiac axis is the pancreas. And in this image, the aorta is seen in the transverse plane, next to the inferior vena cava. The normal diameter of the abdominal aorta is less than 3 centimeters. It can vary depending on the patient's size and age. The normal aortic wall should appear smooth and homogeneous. There should be no thickening or plaque present. Here are the spectral Doppler findings of the abdominal aorta. The proximal aorta is just below the diaphragm and behind the liver. On spectral Doppler, the proximal aorta will usually have a biphasic flow. In some patients, it may show a monophasic flow. The biphasic flow has two components. It has a sharp systolic peak. This is the first component. The second component is the forward diastolic flow. So, because of these two components, it is called a biphasic flow. This biphasic flow is seen when there is low resistance to blood flow. Proximal aorta has a low resistance flow. The peak systolic velocity in the aorta is usually below 100 cm per second approximately. In the distal aorta, as we go down towards the umbilicus, we will find a triphasic flow on spectral Doppler. It is present in the aorta below the renal arteries. The waveform has three components, a sharp systolic peak, followed by a small flow reversal, and finally a forward diastolic flow. These are the three components, so it is a triphasic flow. The distal aorta has higher resistance than the proximal aorta due to its supply to higher resistance vascular beds, such as skeletal muscles, pelvic organs, and lower extremities. The resistance increases due to small-sized arteries and arterial branching, which reduces flow efficiency. Proximal aorta has low resistance flow because it primarily supplies the low resistance organs such as the heart via coronary arteries, the brain via the carotid arteries, the liver and spleen via the celiac trunk, and the kidneys via the renal arteries. These organs receive a constant high volume blood flow to meet their metabolic needs, leading to lower resistance in the vascular beds they supply. Now we will compare the image of the normal aorta with its pathological appearances. Our first case is abdominal aortic aneurysm. It is the abnormal dilatation of the abdominal aorta. An aneurysm is commonly found below the renal arteries. The distal aorta is usually involved. On ultrasound, the diameter of the aorta will be greater than 3 cm or 50% greater than adjacent normal segment. In this image, you can see that the aortic diameter is enlarged. It was greater than 3 cm. This is a transverse image showing an aortic aneurysm. The diameter is greater than 3 cm. Many aortic aneurysms are seen incidentally on ultrasound. Most of the time, they are asymptomatic. Small aneurysms have a diameter between 3 and 4.4 centimeters. These aneurysms require monitoring every 12 months. An aneurysm is classified as medium when its diameter is between 4.5 and 5.4 centimeters. It requires monitoring every 3 months. A high risk large aneurysm has a diameter greater than 5.5 centimeters. It has a very high risk of rupture, so immediate intervention is required. 
However, if the patient has symptoms such as abdominal or back pain, hypotension or shock, then immediate intervention is recommended regardless of the size of the aneurysm. For example, if the patient has these symptoms and the aneurysm size is 4.3 centimeters, then it is considered an emergency and immediate treatment is advised. Here is an image showing an aneurysm with a calcified plaque. This hyperechoic irregular structure in the aortic lumen is the calcified atherosclerotic plaque attached to the wall. Atherosclerosis is the most common cause of an aneurysm, so you often find an aneurysm with plaques or thrombus. This image shows an aneurysm with multiple echogenic thrombi attached to the vessel wall. Here is a longitudinal view showing an aneurysm with echogenic thrombus attached to the aortic wall. The lumen is very narrow in this case. This anechoic area is the lumen. Here is an image in transverse view showing an aneurysm with a thrombus or plaque, narrowing the aortic lumen. A plaque and a thrombus can appear similar on ultrasound. Most aneurysms are fusiform aneurysms. There is a symmetrical dilatation of the entire circumference of the aorta. It is the most common type. This is another case of a fusiform aneurysm with a large echogenic thrombus attached to the aortic wall, narrowing the lumen. These are longitudinal images with color Doppler applied. The normal flow in the aorta is laminar. We do not see any color mixing. This part shows a blue color because the blood here is moving away from the probe because of its direction relative to the probe. Otherwise, there is no color mixing. In the image on the right, the aorta is dilated and there is an ecogenic thrombus seen attached to both the aortic walls. There is some mixing of colors seen on color Doppler within the aneurysm. Some blue colors are present within the red color. It indicates that blood flow is disturbed. Blood is not moving in one direction. This is how a normal aorta appears on color Doppler in transverse view. Only a single color is seen inside the aorta. It is usually the color red. You can see the mixing of colors much better in the transverse view. A swirling pattern is seen on color Doppler in the transverse plane. This color mixing pattern is named the yin yang sign. A secular aortic aneurysm is less common. It is a focal, asymmetrical localized enlargement of the aortic diameter. The rest of the aorta has a normal diameter. If an anechoic or a hypoechoic area is seen just outside the dilated aorta, it indicates a ruptured aortic aneurysm. This is the enlarged aorta with an echogenic thrombus attached to the wall. And this anechoic area is a focal defect between the vessel lumen and the thrombus. This is an aortic rupture. It is a surgical emergency. Here is another case showing a ruptured aortic aneurysm. There is a focal hypoechoic defect behind the thrombus. It is a strong indicator of a ruptured aortic aneurysm. Aortic dissection is the tearing of the intimal layer of the aorta, the innermost layer, which forms a false lumen within the vessel. Only the inner layer is torn and it starts floating into the lumen. This mobile, thin, echogenic line is called the intimal flap. This area under the flap is the false lumen. And this larger area above the flap is the true lumen the actual lumen of the aorta. Usually the false lumen is smaller than the true lumen. This is how an aortic dissection appears. This is another image showing an aortic dissection. 
In real time, the flap moves with the cardiac cycle. This area is the false lumen. And this is the actual lumen, the true lumen of the aorta. Here is a transverse image showing a dissection. This echogenic linear structure is the intimal flap seen floating in the aorta. The false lumen is below the intimal flap, and the true lumen is above it. Here is how an aortic dissection appears on color Doppler. The true lumen shows normal laminar smooth blood flow. The false lumen may show a swirling pattern, or flow direction may even be opposite to the normal flow in the true lumen. In the image, you see blue colors, which means blood is moving opposite to the normal blood flow in the true lumen. Now we will be looking at abnormal spectral Doppler studies regarding the abdominal aorta. Stenosis is the narrowing of the artery due to a thrombus or plaque. Spectral Doppler is very helpful in determining the degree of the stenosis. Normal peak systolic velocity is usually less than 100 cm per second, approximately. Keep in mind that in some patients, the PSV may be over 100 cm per second in normal cases. It may be 110 or 120 cm per second, but mostly it is less than 100. In mild aortic stenosis, the PSV is between 100 and 200 cm per second. In this example, the PSV is 150 cm per second, approximately. You also notice that the waveform is wider and appears more rough as compared to the normal waveform. This broadening and rough appearance of the waveform is called spectral broadening, and it is due to turbulent flow. There is some turbulence present because of the stenosis, which causes this spectral broadening. The turbulence is mild, so it is not prominent on color Doppler. The systolic peak appears wide and less sharp as compared to the normal systolic peak, which is sharp and narrow. Also, the diastolic component appears thicker than normal. If the PSV is between 200 and 300 centimeters per second, it is classified as moderate stenosis. The turbulence will be prominent on color Doppler and spectral broadening will also be greater. In severe stenosis, the PSV will be greater than 300 centimeters per second. In the graph, the unit is meters per second. The PSV here is 3.8 meters per second, which is 380 centimeters per second. So it is very high. Also, you can see turbulence at the site of stenosis. There is a mixing of red and blue colors at the stenosis. This is because blood is moving in different directions because of the plaque, which gives all these different colors. In occlusion, there is a complete blockage in the aorta. The lumen is completely obstructed. This is rare and usually occurs in a rare disease called Lerich syndrome. Lerich syndrome is a condition caused by chronic occlusion of the terminal abdominal aorta and or iliac arteries, typically due to advanced atherosclerosis. It leads to reduced blood flow to the lower limbs and pelvic organs. This occlusion was due to Lerich syndrome. No color signals are present in the aorta on color Doppler because it is occluded. Here is a longitudinal image showing an occlusion. You can see the plaque completely blocking the artery. No color signals are seen here. In cases of severe stenosis or occlusion, Reduced blood flow is seen in the external iliac arteries. This is a normal waveform of the external iliac artery. There is a sharp systolic peak and forward diastolic flow. But in this image, due to reduced blood flow in the external iliac artery, this type of waveform is produced. It is called a tardus parvus waveform. This waveform has a very rounded, broad, and a very blunt systolic peak. 
it indicated a severely reduced blood flow. Here is another image showing a tardus parvus waveform. This is seen distal to the severe stenosis or occlusion. The flow is greatly reduced. We see a very small waveform. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.